what a baby girl's behavior became concerning, her mother decided to take action. Determined to give her daughter Rachel a secure atmosphere, Whitney made the decision to install a covert camera. Her heart fell when she watched what was captured on camera. 2011 was a big year for the family of Springdale, Arkansas, as they were looking forward to the birth of their daughter. When Rachel entered Whitney and Chris's lives, they were ecstatic since it felt like a new beginning for their family. Whitney needed a reliable nanny because she was going to law school, Melissa Medina, an old high school classmate, expressed interest in the job when she asked for suggestions on Facebook. Whitney was aware that even though Melissa had received favorable reviews, she needed to proceed with caution while giving someone her child's care. After looking over Melissa's Facebook page and getting in touch with a reference, Whitney felt reassured that she had found a trustworthy caregiver. But the shocking reality will soon be revealed by the concealed camera. Everything went well when Melissa introduced herself to Rachel, so Whitney had no need to worry. Whitney was anything but a stay-at-home wife or mother. She was a driven person. After a few months of Melissa taking care of Rachel, Whitney was ready to go back to work, even though she was really anxious about leaving her daughter. Whitney and Chris were originally relieved when they turned Rachel over to Melissa on their first day back at work. When they got home, everything seemed to be going well. But that night, something unexpected happened. They saw that Rachel was acting differently, and Whitney's anxiety increased as she tried to figure out why. Was Rachel just feeling under the weather, or was she just worn out from the new routine? The couple toyed with these queries, coming up empty-handed, normally vivacious. Rachel started taking unusually extended sleeps, which confused Whitney. Were they overanalyzing every little detail of their child's behavior, a typical worry among new parents? Whitney stressed her daughter's seeming distress and took Rachel to the doctor to allay her fears. The doctor, in spite of Whitney's worries, discovered no physical problems and speculated that Rachel might be going through separation anxiety, which is normal in kids her age. Whitney struggled to get over her fears. Despite the fact that separation anxiety usually manifests as clinginess and sobbing when parents are away, Rachel's actions looked strange, and the worried mother had more concerns. Whitney tried to ignore her gut feeling that Melissa might be the cause of Rachel's distress, but her intuition wouldn't go away. Whitney started her own inquiry since she was determined to find out the truth. She deliberated for several weeks before deciding it was time to act. She got a clock with a covertly installed camera in the hopes of recording any possible wrongdoing by Melissa. Whitney's greatest worries were realized as she nervously went over the video. She was angry and in astonishment at the same time as she witnessed Melissa's frightening antics on camera. When Whitney discovered that Melissa had taken use of the clock's concealed lens to control the situation, the betrayal was profound. Whitney couldn't stop wondering. Did Melissa really think she was being watched, or didn't she realize she was being watched? Whitney hoped for clarity as she hoped as she shook hands and linked the camcorder to her computer. Every instant seemed to last forever. Whitney wondered if the footage contained anything other than a blank wall as she waited for the playback. Had Melissa tampered with it in any way? Whitney's conscience was tormented by these doubts, which strengthened her resolve to find the truth. A startling truth was exposed by the video. Rachel had experienced assault on a regular basis. For two hours, Melissa left the little girl in a jumper with no one helping her. The video captured Rachel in pain from being motionless for hours, starving, and dehydrated. The nanny cam kept recording Melissa's activities, showing off her violent tendencies. She was observed shaking and giving Rachel hard slaps to stop her from weeping. Melissa was not the person Chris and Whitney thought she was. The video also brought attention to the possibility of shook baby syndrome, a severe kind of abusive head trauma that can result in serious brain damage without any obvious symptoms and is difficult to identify unless someone witnesses it. Rachel's sudden change of behavior was ultimately clarified by the hidden camera footage. To put an end to her sobs, Melissa was seen smacking and aggressively shaking the girl, fearing the worst. Whitney hurried her daughter to the emergency hospital after becoming overwhelmed by what she saw, while Melissa was being abused on tape. Whitney called the police and gave them all the information they needed. The next day, Melissa showed up to work unprepared for anything out of the ordinary. The cops surprised her the second she got out of her vehicle, as Melissa was swiftly led away to the station. Whitney had a final glimpse of her being seized from her front window. Melissa was now having to deal with the fallout from her deeds. Melissa should have been held accountable for her callous behavior. 
which targeted defenseless individuals. Still, Melissa faced a hurdle. As a first offender, the most severe criminal charge that could be levied against her was Class D, which pertains to harming the welfare of a minor. With a potential term of three months in jail, Melissa would avoid serious penalties for her crimes, with the possibility of the accusation being wiped from her record after three years. She could even return to her employment as a nanny afterwards. She might cause harm to another child in the future because there is no national registry for child abusers. Whitney was so adamant about stopping this that she spoke out to the media and anybody else who would listen about her struggle, but she was also aware that word of mouth alone might not be sufficient to prevent Melissa from interacting with other families. In an effort to make Arkansas the pioneering state to have a child abuse registry, Whitney set out to introduce the necessary laws. In order to better safeguard children, this registry would make sure that all individuals with a history of abuse are listed. Melissa still hadn't spoken up, and Whitney seemed to have good reason to think that she wouldn't. Melissa kept her reasons for doing what she did a mystery since she never spoke to the media or gave an explanation. There was no doubt in her mind, she would never nanny again. It was Whitney's life's mission to end caregiver abuse so that no other child had to go through what she had using her legal training to bolster her position with expert and constitutional arguments, she campaigned nonstop, amassing hundreds of supporters. As this was happening, Rachel was scanned and tested extensively to determine the exact extent of her trauma. The absence of serious brain damage upon her initial hospital admission was astounding, the family is doing great, and Whitney just said in an interview that Rachel is so lively and happy all the time despite the fact that shaken baby syndrome may cause psychological problems to manifest later on, the family is ready to confront any difficulties head-on with love and strength, for the first story, that is it. Now let's go to another one that's comparable, at the age of nine. Victoria was full of life and energy as she ran and played with her friends at recess, dodgeball, jumping rope, and meeting new friends were her favorite parts of the day because they made her happy and gave her a vacation from her problems at home. A committed student with aspirations of becoming a veterinarian to care for gorgeous animals, Victoria persevered through math struggles and embarrassing exam blunders caused by anxiety. Things were really different back home, living in poverty. Victoria and her father Rodrigo struggled to fill the emptiness caused by the sad tragedy that had taken the lives of their mother and two younger siblings three years before. Tragically, the tour bus, a vehicle that Rodrigo could hardly afford, had a flat tire and careened off a cliff, ruining what should have been an enjoyable journey back from the beach, although only Rodrigo and Victoria made it through the ordeal alive. The trauma they endured on that fateful day altered the course of their lives in indelible ways. Rodrigo gave his everything to Victoria's care, no matter how difficult it was, and he spent many hours by her side as she recovered and thereafter. But things took a worrying turn for Victoria when she reported pain in her privates, which led to the involvement of the authorities. Shock washed over the town as the truth came out, exposing a terrifying truth that Victoria had silently lived through. Rodrigo was suddenly let go from his employment without any kind of recompense, which sent him into a hopeless position as he tried to take care of his one surviving child, though young, Rodrigo, at just 35 years old, was disabled by a residual leg damage from the accident and unable of doing physically taxing employment, moreover, the trauma from the tragedy had turned him into a distant and taciturn person, a clear change from his past personality. Victoria felt the significant change in her father's attitude even if she couldn't completely understand the degree of his suffering, desperate to lighten his load, she started housework, carefully cleaning anywhere she might help, her attempts, nevertheless, were ineffectual in easing her father's ongoing unhappiness, Rodrigo hardly had the time or energy to interact with his daughter, juggling two recent jobs to keep the house running, his tiredness from late-night job left him nothing to offer. Therefore leaving Victoria to negotiate most of her life alone, Victoria, however, had a strong will and found comfort in the familiarity of school, a haven where she could momentarily release the weight of her family problems. But one fateful day when Rodrigo came home, boiling with pent-up anger, the seeming steadiness broke. He slammed the door behind him with white, tense knuckles, sequestered in her room. Victoria withdrew at the sound, her heart racing with anxiety. Her anxiety grew more when Rodrigo showed up in her doorway, he seemed drunk and erratic, his accusing investigation over her absence from school on a Saturday further heightened the suspense, 
leaving Victoria confused and on the brink of tears unable to understand the cause of her father's anger. Two days later, on Monday, Victoria discovered she was engulfed in an unexplained fear despite her best attempts to restore a sense of normality. She woke up experiencing unusual discomfort in her private area and couldn't get rid of the impression that something was wrong. She went through her morning ritual while her father was already on his way to work, yet she felt a continuous discomfort. She set off for school after dressing, swallowing the remains of old coffee her father had made days previously, but the ache grew with every stride, throwing a shadow across her path. The discomfort had progressed into a constant aching by the time she arrived at her classroom, rendering focus impossible. Victoria started to look forward the forthcoming break as the minutes went by since the discomfort got more noticeable. Victoria tried to divert herself with play once outside and surrounded by her friends, but every movement only heightened the agony, like if she were cut from inside. Unable to hide her pain, she confided in her companions, who at a loss chose to ask their instructor, Clara, for aid. Seeing Victoria's suffering, Clara went gently to ask about her condition, embarrassed, Victoria battled to express her pain, she looked down, she finally plucked the bravery to indicate her private area, therefore exposing the cause of her unease, alert, Clara urged Victoria to tell if she had confided in anybody at home and asked for more information, startled, Victoria paused, which only made Clara more curious. The pressure grew and Victoria grudgingly admitted that her father was her only home caregiver under Clara's relentless probing. Hearing this discovery, Clara became more worried. Clara came to see that Rodrigo, who had never attended parent meetings, left his character and behavior a puzzle. She understood little about him, knowing the possible risks children in vulnerable circumstances like Victoria's face. Clara gently inquired more to see if her father had behaved unusually at home. Overwhelmed by contradictory feelings, Victoria said nothing, her mind kept returning to the day Rodrigo's irritation had erupted in her room, not sure she could express her worries, she reassured Clara everything was good and the agony had gone away, desperate to avoid drawing attention, Victoria went back to her seat and covered her pain with a surface of normalcy, Victoria tried to hide her pain, but Clara couldn't get rid of her mounting worry. She watched Victoria's unfocused behavior and noted the indicators of agony she was trying to hide throughout the session. Disturbed by the situation of her students, Clara set out to find means of assistance. With each twinge, Victoria's terror grew as she endured the excruciating pain alone for days, feeling vulnerable and uneasy. She found it difficult to open up to anyone. A second educator, Laura, saw Victoria was upset and gently asked her questions to get to the bottom of it. But Victoria, who was terrified, kept up her act of normalcy and pretended everything was all right even though she was going through a terrible time emotionally, Laura felt something was wrong and discussed her worries about Victoria's welfare with her co-workers and the school administration. The school set out to discover the truth about Victoria's home life because they were worried about her safety and wanted to be there for her while the investigation progressed. The memories of her mother and the constant anguish she endured kept Victoria mired in her solitude. Her pain didn't go away and she was getting weaker and less able to handle things as time passed, without anybody to confide in or divert her attention from her internal struggles. She spent the majority of her school day sitting alone, as she walked with her head lowered. The mothers of her classmates noticed her depression and took note of her melancholy appearance and manner. They came up to her in an attempt to be welcoming and kind, but Victoria was still guarded since she knew how dangerous her home life was and how much risk her father and herself were in danger. Even as the worried teachers were talking to her and watching how she acted, Victoria was on high alert. They were already suspicious when they noticed her increased nervousness whenever the subject came up with her father, as usual. Victoria's recent excruciating pain was there when she came at school one day. Out of nowhere, the agony intensified to the point where she broke down in cries of desperation. The class teacher, Clara, came racing over to help and yelled out, Victoria, what's wrong? In reaction, the girl could do nothing but sob. After rescuing her, Clara quickly notified the school director and made her way to the nurse's office. The director quickly realized the gravity of the situation and summoned rescue workers. At the same time, Victoria's dad Rodrigo got a panicked call at the office and hurried over to be by his daughter's side. When he got there, he saw her crying furiously. In an effort to reassure her, he spoke softly and asked, My darling, what transpired? Inform daddy of the problem. Victoria could only whimper as she writhed in pain. 
She longed to get home but was afraid of his reaction to her calling him away from work, speaking in a voice strained with anguish and terror. She knew he had obligations, but she feared he could get angry. She started screaming because the pain was too much. Seeing his tiny daughter in such pain filled him with an overwhelming sense of terror. The fact that his teachers were watching his every move just made him more anxious and worried. Just then, two officers walked into the room. Their faces contorted into a combination of sternness and resolve. Nervous and confused, Rodrigo wanted to know what was going on. A sergeant approached him and somberly informed him that an allegation of violence involving Victoria had been received. Astonished and bewildered, Rodrigo struggled to make sense of the charge. A police officer approached Rodrigo and detained him. Rodrigo's incredulity transformed into a furious outcry as he was arrested on charges of serious violence against a juvenile. He told everyone there that he was innocent and proclaimed his love for his daughter as he strongly rejected the accusations, but the cops ignored him and dragged him away in an armed raid. As he was led away, Rodrigo's cries for his daughter resounded through the room, and he felt his heart sink at the sight of her fear and confusion. Fear gripped Victoria as she watched her father dragged into custody. She couldn't help but wonder whether she was to blame. In a tragic duet of despair, her own cries for help joined her father's wailing for help. The entire school community was taken aback by the events that were occurring. Many parents were horrified by the idea of a father abusing his daughter, and others were worried about the safety of their own children. The headmaster struggled to keep his cool as Victoria was airlifted to the emergency room. Rodrigo, meanwhile, was enraged and frustrated to the point that he could only think about making sure his daughter was secure inside the Chilean police station. Consequently, he failed to comprehend the rationale behind the horrific accusations leveled against him. His daughter needed him most, but he was unable to provide it since he was incarcerated in a cold, unsettling cell with indifferent police officers surrounding him. I assure you, I was completely innocent. Rodrigo pleaded with the authorities, attempting to clear his name. I could never harm my daughter, more than anything in the world. I adore her. He was met with doubtful looks from the police. This is a really serious issue, and you must understand that, sir. We should look into this thoroughly. When you're not hiding anything, there's no need to be scared. All we're doing is obeying the rules. Rodrigo struggled to comprehend how this could be occurring and felt guilty and humiliated. Sir, all I want is to see my daughter, he begged. I need to be by her side. She's in pain right now. But the agents would not listen to him and would not move. Several prisoners then came up to him. What happened, brother? inquired one. Rodrigo took a big breath and started to cry. I was detained, and my daughter is ill and in a lot of agony. He went on, his voice trembling with anger. They think I did something to her, but I swear I would never hurt my little girl. The prisoners exchanged glances with distrust palpably obvious in their eyes. Children are precious. Bro, if you really did hurt them, you are going to pay a high price. It's unclear exactly what happened, but the fact that you're here indicates that someone has doubts about you. Rodrigo saw that the situation was becoming more intricate and risky. He sat down on the other side of the cell so he could still hear what was being said. He was filled with worry and doubt, wondering if they thought he had injured his own daughter, one prisoner said. You should be in prison indefinitely. A beat skipped by Rodrigo's heart. He began to wonder if he was truly innocent and realized he wanted to find out what was going on and prove it. As everything was going on, Victoria was given medicines to help her feel better while she lay in the hospital bed. She was gently told that the doctor was going to examine her. When the young child noticed bloodstains on her clothes, she became scared and nervous and wished her father was there. Victoria cried uncontrollably despite the director. Clara, and Laura's best efforts to console her, the doctor gathered samples and conducted examinations in a timely manner. At last, she walked up to Victoria and greeted her as hello, princess. Where's the agony that you feel? Victoria gestured to her stomach. The doctor checked her over and told her everything was fine, but she also had some unpleasant news to break, she politely said. The good news is that your tummy is fine. Unfortunately, you have a urinary tract infection. We'll offer you medication to aid with it, so don't worry. Victoria was beginning puberty, which may have contributed to her discomfort, the doctor suggested. She explained that Victoria's body was reacting normally to her environment and that there were no indications of an attack. Clara, Laura, and the director all sighed with relief when their doubts were confirmed. They were deeply ashamed of themselves for not allowing Rodrigo to prove his innocence. 
they demanded Rodrigo's release over the phone as soon as they got to the police station, opening Rodrigo's cell, the guard said. So, you really are innocent, huh? It had been confirmed that Victoria's loving and caring father had been correct. As Rodrigo began to cry with relief, Rodrigo had dedicated his life to raising his daughter, despite his tattered appearance and the difficulties he encountered, he would never hurt her. That much was evident, unfortunately. Because of his hectic work schedule and financial struggles, he frequently didn't have a clear understanding of his daughter's circumstances, he started gathering cans from roadside ditches and hiking trails as a last resort after losing one of his jobs, his lone surviving family and only daughter, Victoria, had survived a horrific accident, yet despite all of this, his greatest love was for her. Rodrigo could finally see Victoria again at the hospital. Victoria ran into his arms as he was waiting tensely, his heart pounding. They both sobbed and held each other close. Rodrigo apologized for everything his daughter had gone through and promised to always be by her side. Rodrigo received prompt apology from the teachers and the school director, who acknowledged the error that had been made. The gynecologist then cleared up any confusion and informed Rodrigo that Victoria was okay. Rodrigo was really grateful and relieved to hear the news. The head of the school extended an apology and gave Rodrigo a job as a janitor, giving him a more steady income to maintain his daughter. Knowing that accepting the offer would improve their comfort and mental clarity, Rodrigo gladly accepted it. In the end, Rodrigo was exonerated of all false accusations, and Victoria remained well. Rodrigo came to the realization that nothing could ever separate him and his daughter, even though their love had only grown stronger over time. After watching the story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.